Hello, good evening. Welcome to Business Life. Coming up, Finance Minister refused claim that the IMF program will lead to immediate return to the capital market. My board approval is far from a magic solution wand. And what it is, however, is a crucial first step on the necessary journey of strong reforms, inclusive growth, and relentless pursuit of a growth agenda geared towards restoring our economy to a place of strength, prosperity, and resilience. Ecobank Group shareholders approve 11 cents as a dividend for the last year as management promises to sustain strong recovery after posting 573 million in profit before tax. No, because that will help shareholders to understand the decision you have taken by giving us 11 cents out of one, uh, $1.63. I do not know. But for me, I think you are too conservative on that. We need dividend to eat, to exist. This bulletin, we will explore the impact of utility tariff hikes and tax increases on inflation rates as slowdown and whether recent reversal could be affected. We have details of these and many others lined up for you. Please stay. Pleasure you could join us. I am Pius Kojo Baka to our very first story. Finance Minister Ken Uforiata has ruled out using the IMF approval to seek an immediate return to the capital market. There have been reports of government working to borrow from the international capital market to complement the $3 billion from the IMF to deal with the financing gap facing the economy. But Finance Minister Ken Uforiata insists that it is not the situation on the ground. Approval is far from a magic solution wand. And what it is, however, is a crucial first step on the necessary journey of strong reforms, inclusive growth, and relentless pursuit of a growth agenda geared towards restoring our economy to a place of strength, prosperity, and resilience. Undoubtedly, the economic toll on our people from the effects of the global poly crisis um, cannot be understated. Uh, we are indeed grateful for the forbearance of all Ghanaians in the wake of the domestic debt exchange program, which was difficult but ultimately a necessary um, exercise. It also has impacted our banking institutions, and we look to work with the banks to make sure that we get the financial stability um, that is required. Ultimately, the debt exchange program combined with our multi-year focus on growth, fiscal sustainability, and debt sustainability should accelerate our economy renaissance. We're already seeing some relative stability in the currency uh, and in inflation, thanks to the work also by the central bank. Uh, indeed, um, I think we have to move ahead. And as a good book says, we should forget the former things. We should not dwell on the past and see that new things are being done. And we are ready um, for that. Well, the IMF is optimistic that Ghana's program approved by its board will help turn around the economy and deal with structural issues facing the economy. It follows concerns that length of the program might not be enough to properly address current challenges facing the economy. But speaking at a joint press conference, Washington, D.C., Mission Chief Stefan Rode disagrees this program is not robust to deal with current challenges facing the economy. Ghana's economic program, has three, economic program has three key objectives. The first one is to restore macroeconomic stability. The second one is to ensure that debt is put on a sustainable path. And the third one is to lay the foundations for stronger and more inclusive growth. To reach these objectives, several policy priorities have been laid out by the government. First, large and front-loaded me measures to bring public finances back on a sustainable path. And this will be done by mobilizing more domestic revenue and by improving the efficiency of public spending. Importantly, um, and I want to emphasize that the program does and, and will continue to include efforts to protect the vulnerable. 
just to give you a few examples, the 2023 budget has, for example, doubled the level of benefits for the existing targeted cash transfer program, the, the LEAP, the Living Empowerment Against Poverty program. And it has also boosted allocations towards the school feeding program. Second, to support fiscal adjustment and enhance resilience to shocks, ambitious structural reforms will be implemented in the areas of tax policy, revenue administration, public financial management, as well as reforms to, to address the weaknesses in the energy and the cocoa sectors. Third, and I already referred to that, steps are being taken to bring inflation under control. And the Bank of Ghana has been raising interest rates and has virtually eliminated monetary financing of the budget. A flexible exchange rate policy will also uh, be implemented to help rebuild international reserves. Fourth, measures to preserve financial stability are very central to the, to the program. And last but not least, uh, the government will also be implemented, implementing reforms to encourage private investment, higher growth and job creation. In conclusion, let me highlight that this program and policies and reforms, together with the debt restructuring, will help Ghana overcome immediate economic and financing challenges and pave the way for a brighter future for all Ghanaians. And it is important that we bring this to you because the 600 million cities, um, dollars, I beg your pardon, has hit the Bank of Ghana's account. And it is important we have to bring that to your attention. A while longer with the International Monetary Fund because they have indicated that the Bank of Ghana's act will be revised to strengthen the central bank's independence and mitigate fiscal dominance by the government. According to the fund, the amendments to the Central Bank Act will feature a stricter limit for monetary financing mechanisms to monitor and enforce compliance and a clear definition of emergency situations under which the limit can be temporarily lifted. Now, some critics have said an MOU signed between the Finance Ministry and the Bank of Ghana for zero financing of government budget is not enough to ensure compliance. But research lead at GCB Capital Courage Booty disagrees with those calls. The law allows, um, I think, up to 5% of the previous year's revenue. Uh, and there is an argument that support those things. You could have instances where genuinely revenues are not performing or are not coming in, and you need support to the extent. And the idea is that those overdraft or financing at the end of the year, you should have brought the balance to zero anyways. So think if it's about law, the laws exist. Um, but we are in a period where you've had over 40 billion of deficit financing in a single year. Mm -hmm. And the total obligation from government to BOG stands above 70 billion at this point. And if we are going to restructure that debt, uh, the IMF is saying, as we've seen it in the technical notes, that it could mean the Bank of Ghana would have to do recapitalization at some point. And so if the commercial banks are struggling and the central bank, the regulator itself is also struggling, it's, it's an exceptional circumstance, really. And that is why I believe some of these zero financing is just to say we are tightening the grip a bit so that we do not use the provision in the law, but to do something maybe better than that for a time being okay. so that we can correct a setting anomaly. But there are instances where it is absolutely necessary that we get such uh, uh, support, really. So legislating a zero deficit financing will be stretching it a bit too far. Well, could there be reversal of the recent slowdown in inflation rate? Well, that's the concern of some analysts following the recent hikes in some taxes, as well as the recent increase in water and utility tariffs. Let's get on to Zoom and speak to economist Professor Ebo Texan for his perspective on this development within the last couple of hours now. Grateful you could join us, Professor Texan, on Business Live. First off, I want to pick your thoughts on what has transpired so far in relation to Ghana securing the um, deal, basically. Kindly unmute for me, sir. Uh, thank you, and good evening to your viewers. I, I think that this has come as a great news to the whole country. Um, definitely, we need that credibility that comes with securing such support from the IMF. And obviously, of course, the money will come in to, to show up our reserves. But the credibility that comes with it is so key uh, to getting back the confidence of the investing public and then to see how best 
will roll back the economy to uh, on the road of recovery. Mm. So it certainly is a good news for us, and um, no two ways about that. It's going to make a difference to our macro indicators. Mm. As we speak now, we can confirm to you that indeed the six hundred million dollars has um, hit the Bank of Ghana's account. Um, this should mean great to the economy and, of course, the stability of the local currency, isn't it? The currency has been relatively stable, of course, possibly because of the fact that there was expectation that the fund was going to oblige and then support Ghana. But definitely, of course, I mean, the speculators who have held on to some of the forex, I would now know that the stability that we've gained is going to be there for some time. Mm. And on the self-fulfilling prophecy, when they begin to offload, then even gives us more stability. So definitely that currency is going to appreciate and remain stable for a period of time. And hopefully that is going to transform into the disinflation process that we find the economy going through at the moment. So, I mean, things will get better definitely with this IMF program. And of course, the strict, um, what do you call it, um, um, criteria of fiscal discipline that comes with it is what is key to all of this. And we should be excited that we are going to have a situation where this year the central bank is going to commit and has already committed to the whole financing of government uh, 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 um, deficit. And therefore, it means that the government has to get this act clean, uh, rationalize its expenditure, uh, show up more of this revenue, because nothing is going to come from the central bank this time. So this, this whole issue of credibility, the central bank committing to a very credible fiscal consolidation, zero financing, stability of the city, and this inflation process, these are all good indicators that will get the economy to restore back to where it was. Mm. Well, there's been this concern, especially from the business community, which has to do with the conditionalities um, where they are made to, you know, pay taxes, um, as we've witnessed over the period, um, talk of the utility tariffs, etc. Now, there are concerns that that may or might defeat um, government quest of taming down inflation. How do you respond to that as well? Of course, I mean, these uh, utility price hikes are going to uh, factor into um, um, the cost of production and therefore uh, some prices. I don't forget also that energy prices are going in our favor in terms of fuel prices and the uh, uh, cost of transportation has been, is, been is, is going to decline by 20%. So these would together tone down the impact that the UK price hikes would have had, a one-off impact on our inflation. Uh, so possibly um, the levels at which we expect inflation to be which is going to be on the downward trend like we've seen. Mm. We expect it to go below 40%, uh, um, inching towards the, 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 the mid 30% and so on and so forth, would slightly be impacted by the extent of increase in prices as a result of the utility price hike. Uh, but it's going to be one of, afterwards, the, the process will go on. So um, I can understand this is the time that we need to make some of these very difficult decisions as a country. Um, um, and consumers would want to make sure that the supplies of utilities are doing that efficiently so that if you got to pay more for whatever it is, so that it gets us to get our acts right, so that the economy will become stable, jobs will be created, people will get work to do, earn incomes. It shouldn't be a problem if you are paying high utility bills. And it's important that especially that we rather focus on households in terms of these utility price hikes rather than on business, because we need them to generate more employment. And when we increase such tariffs, it has an impact on the ability to expand and generate employment, and which is key to our recovery. So um, these are hard choices that we have to go through. But hopefully things are going to get better, and ultimately the Ghanaian public, the Ghanaian uh, residents will be better off uh, as things improve. Well, so what do you say to people or some uh, critics who say that, well, it is indeed good for them to conclude that because of these developments, um, the recent slowdown will be affected in terms of inflation? Oh, there's, there's um, of course, the expectations about future inflation are taking a down to all the sort of pressures that were coming up that were showing up our inflation are now moving towards the downward trend. So inflation pressures are down. The global uh, economy, you could see that happening uh, countries are beginning to pull down on their policy rate hikes. All of these things would invariably lead to uh, um, quite a, a bit of uh, reduced tightening 
on, on financial conditions. So the IMF policy, IMF reforms, and all of that, that would help our economy to attract more investment to come in. It will also bring up back the credibility. But no matter what it is, definitely it will have an impact a little bit on inflation. But trust me, the disinflation part that has started over the last four months is not going to stop anytime soon. Because the currency is stable, fuel prices are de decreasing, we're having a reduction in petroleum prices, and therefore on transportation first. This will slightly um, derail that disinflation process, but definitely the process will go on. Very well. We are indeed grateful, Doc, uh, Professor Ebo Texan, for your time here on Business Life, speaking to us here. We are indeed grateful. If you're still watching Business Life with me, Pios Koju Baka. There'll be more after this break. Hello, welcome back. Let's continue with the rest of our stories and shareholders of Ecobank Transactional Incorporated have approved the board's proposal to pay 11 cents as a dividend for last year. This represents about $28 million as total payout to the shareholders for the 2022 after profit before tax of $573 million. George Yafe has more from Lome Toge. Approval of the dividend and other resolutions tabled at the annual general meeting at the headquarters of Ecobank Group in Lome, Togo, didn't come without any concerns from shareholders. This is because some of them thought that the bank could have done better in terms of the dividend that was proposed. Here is one of the shareholders coming from Nigeria. We, we will not refuse to take 11.02 cents, but going forward, please, let us look at it properly. I don't know the dividend policy we are having, what can we pay out of the earning per shares? I do not know, because that will help shareholders to understand the decision you have taken by giving us 11 cents out of $1.63. Uh, $1 I do not know. But for me, I think you are too conservative on that. We need dividend to eat, to exist. But board chairman of Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, Alan Lekosho, maintained that looking at where the bank is coming from, it would be best to propose the 11 cents as dividend for last year. What has actually been delivered, but also the kind of prudence that we need, you know, in terms of, you know, strengthening our balance sheet and then having enough ammunition to be able to make the needed investment to take us where, where we want to be. But be assured, you know, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's the group as a whole, it's really much the focus of the board and the management to take us where where we should be and where we deserve to be. And um, and I'm pretty sure all those, the discussion today will will actually eventually highlight highlight that 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 objective. Speaking in an interview with Joy Business after the annual general meeting, Chief Executive of the group Jeremy Awari talked about measures being implemented to ensure that this good run. Is sustained. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is that I think Ecobank has a very good foundation. You've heard the performance uh, for 2022, which is why we're here. Uh, I've come in because I want to try and work with the team and lead this business into the next strategic horizon, which is, you know, to become bigger, to grow, to deliver strong financial performance, and then more importantly, also to make an impact across the continent you know, and, and solve some of the financial services problems that we are facing in, in only a way that uh, a Pan-African bank can do. Uh, so we, we are working on our agenda around the things which we feel are an opportunity. Uh, one, there's a few core focus areas. We want to grow our existing business in corporate banking. We see some opportunities in the consumer and the commercial bank, which serves the SMEs. We've got a, a great platform of 35 countries across the continent. We can make real-time payments across the continent. We want to partner with tech companies like fintech companies to take them across the continent using our platform and using our rails. And then lastly, we want to really support Africa continental free trade you know, with a, with a view of supporting that trade, supporting trade across each, uh, you know, African countries um, and lifting the lives of Africans as we do so. Ecobank Group also got shareholders to approve an exercise to raise about $500 million to service an old debt that was maturing. 
Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, the parent company of Ecobank Ghana, ended last year. This has been Business Life with me, Pios Kojobaka. You can always get business stories when you log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Always a pleasure serving you. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.